Hallelujah and amen. Praise the Lord. This is Reverend Essie and Friends on the 13th of July, 2011. God is good. Brought us through another another week. From one Wednesday to another, God is good. From day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute, the Lord is good. And I give him praise and honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, we're ready to do Matthew 25 tonight. We're going to discuss the parable of the ten virgins. So before I pray and everything, I wanted to let you know that. If you want to turn your Bibles to Matthew 25, and we will discuss that tonight. That will be the topic of our Bible study tonight. So let me pray in. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we love you just for who you are, just for being God all by yourself. We love you for just being God and loving us and taking good care of us, Lord God, at times we didn't even take care of ourselves the way that we should have. Lord God, I thank you for this Bible study tonight. I thank you for everybody that's on it, everybody that's going to come on it, those who listen later. Bless those who are at home right now, Lord Debbie and a few other people that we know that can't make it sometimes, Pastor Rod. Bless the people, Lord God, who listen and enjoy the Bible study. We want to hear your word, Lord God. We just want to discuss and come out knowing more about your holy word, about your holy son, Jesus, for he is the word, Lord God, Jesus, the Christ. He is the anointing, the holy anointing that we want within ourselves, Lord God. Lord, let your Holy Spirit come into this place tonight and just burn out all the dross and bring healing and deliverance within this Bible study and to those ears that hear. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, so, Matthew 25. And is everybody going to read? Who's going to read? I can read. Three? Okay. Uh, so three's good. We'll do three, 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 and three. <laughs> okay. Um, Matthew 25. And I'll start out. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But, all right, it says here that we have uh, virgins who took their lamps, it says in verse 1. Now, Jesus is always, I, I like how he told these parables. Um, and, and notice when he told stories, uh, they didn't have names, but when he told parables, I mean, when he told parables, they didn't have names, but whenever he spoke about other things, that he put names in them. When You could tell it's a parable when there's not a name, but he's saying there's ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Here, Jesus is likening this story to the kingdom of heaven, and he's uh, he's letting us know how some people think, consider the kingdom of heaven. We need to start getting more serious about the kingdom of heaven and knowing that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus is coming back. The second coming is going to happen. And the main thing I noticed about it, it, it uh, verse 2 says, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. He's letting us know before he even finishes the story that they had some problems. Amen. Mm-hmm. And he says it. He says it before he even gets to the point, the meat of the story. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he says uh, five of the virgins were wise uh, in Matthew twenty-five. Five of the virgins were wise, and five of them were foolish. And, and then verse three. Notice something in verse three. Um, I heard this story a million times, and I, I never noticed this. In verse 3, it says they had the five, uh, it says uh, they that were foolish took their lamps. Okay, they went along with the the wise virgins, and they took their lamps. But notice in the second part of verse 3, it says they took no oil with them. I don't know if anybody, have you ever noticed that before when you heard the story or read the story? Mm -hmm. They took no oil with them. You know, uh, every time I heard someone tell the story before, they made it sound like they ran out of oil. No, they started out without oil. So, see, God always wants us to be prepared. The wise, they call, he calls the, the, the uh, virgins that took oil wise virgins. Why do you think that he called 
the ones that took oil wise virgins. What is this? What is this? Huh? Because they were prepared. They were ready. Exactly. They were prepared and they were ready. What is oil the symbolism of? The, the, the anointing. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh. Hello. This is Rod. Hi, Pastor Rod. How are you? I'm fine. So, the five wise virgins took the anointing with them. Mm-hmm. What, what section are you on? Uh, Matthew text? 25. Okay. Okay, and I just did verse 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3. So, the, the wise virgins had the anointing. They had the oil with them. And you're foolish if you don't have the anointing. And and that takes me to churches nowadays, congregations, churches, um, uh, how some of them look like... You notice the, the, all ten of them were virgins. They all looked alike, and they all fit the same category. Oh, Jesus, I didn't mean to go this deep, and I am. Uh, they all fit the same category, but what is the difference between the five and the five? And it's just like churches today. Some churches and, and some some congregations, uh, people who, uh, if some of them have the anointing, and some of them look like they have the anointing. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that that's what I get. I get out of that. You know, um, some even though we all look alike. Deep down inside, we're not, you know, we're nothing without the anointing of God. Clanging cymbals, loud brass, you know, no matter, even when you hear preachers preach sometimes, you know, some preachers preach and they can be loud and they can do all that stuff and symphonics or whatever the word, big words they use when they're preaching. But just because they preach like that does not mean that they have the anointing with them. And I'll mm-hmm. stop there. I'll stop there because there's something else I want to say, but we didn't get to it yet. Amen, amen. Um, Judy, you want to do four, five, and six? Sure. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. When the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Yeah. Okay. Oops, the, the, the wise virgins were ready. They they had their oil, and they all the virgins slumbered and slept, which takes me back to the the passage saying that he will come like a thief in the night. Mm-hmm. Here they're they're reiterating that he's going to come at night. That God will come at night, and then the the cry was made: Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And when they talk about the end of times coming, they say that there will be a loud trumpet and, and, you know, a calling. (laughs) And you're being called, you know, called to come out and meet meet Jesus. Meet the Lord. Uh, Amen. Oh, wouldn't that be something to hear the cry and not be ready? Oh, I don't even want to think. Let's not go there. Let's not think it up. <laughs> and, that's something, and, and something else went through my mind, Judy, when you were talking. Um, I don't know about back then, but I don't know too many sellers, that we'll put it that way, who are open at midnight. Right. So where are you going to get your oil at midnight? You're not. It's going, yeah, it's going to be hard, right? So in other words, I would say you're kind of out of luck, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you know? Anybody want to say anything else about that so far? No? Okay. While the bridegroom tarried, verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Is this what we're supposed to be doing? No. What, what do you think? What do you think we're supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be ready. We're supposed to be watching for the bridegroom to come. Mm-hmm. You know, people say old people say sleeping with one eye open. 
<laughs> you ever hear that? Yeah. Sleeping yeah. with one eye open. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. That goes to show that there are divine delays in our lives. We're going to have divine delays, but just because, how does it go? It says just because it's delayed doesn't mean it's denied. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, see, this is, what the, this is the message that God has for everybody here today. Just because something in your life right now seems to be like it's on delay does not mean that God denied you. Oh, that's, I'm feeling it. That's such a word. Because um, there are some people, and I know this is for me too, there are some people where uh, the enemy wants you to think that you are not going to get that thing that you've been praying to God for. This is one of those Daniel situations where it took 21 days for him to get his answer. But God is telling you that delaying is not denial. Okay, so keep holding on to God's unchanging hand and um, just keep your faith, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, okay, that's a that, word for that's everybody. Hit me in several, that's hitting me in several places right now. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen, Judy. And whoever else this is meant for, don't give up. The enemy wants you to think that, all oh, he didn't hear your prayers, or you didn't pray right, or you sinned. You did this and you did that, and God's not answering you. Yes, he is. God is faithful. God is not a man. He said, like, God is faithful. When God says he's going to do something, he's going to do something. The enemy wants us to go around and say, oh, yeah, right, the God stuff. Here we go with the God stuff again. The God ain't thinking about me. I give up. I'm tired. And that's what, it's, see, we are, we're going on, I'm going off, but we are what we speak. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, God said, what, who did God say he was? What's his name? One of his names. He said, I am that I am. Mm-hmm. And whenever we say, I am, we're speaking that. The Father and I are one. I am. I am that I am. And whenever you say, I am sick, you become sick. Your body hears mm-hmm. this. You're, 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 you see what I'm saying? Your uh, atoms and, and, and everything hears this. And this is people, a lot of people make themselves sick. I'm tired. I am so tired of this, and I'm so tired of that. But then you wonder why you're aggravated all the time and why you're, you're feeling rough and, and not enough sleep and, and miserable about things because you're speaking it out. I am that I am. You know? I'm dumb. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm no good. I'm not smart. All those, be careful of your I am. Okay, I'm sorry. I went off on something, but I, that, that just had to be said. Just be careful of your I am's, everybody. Praise the Lord. You have the great I am within you. Go ahead. You went off. You went off on purpose. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Yeah. That was something I got. Yeah, I I went through a few I am's about a half hour ago. Wow. Some of what you just said is exactly what I was saying. Praise God. Now, you see how he loves you? He used me to talk to you. I didn't even know why I went off like that. That's him. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. He's letting you know I am inside you. You have the great I am in you. Start saying those I am. I am rich. I am joyful. I am happy. I am all that because God lives in me. Now, you don't want to get cocky. You know, we just want to make sure we don't, we don't get cocky attitudes or anything because, you know, Jesus was a serious brother sometimes, but he wasn't cocky. He wasn't ignorant, you know. But, no, mm-hmm. you're, you're none of those bad things, Judy. And don't even, don't even practice them. But practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear them say on TV or whatever or scientists say that if you do something for 21 days, it becomes a habit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many days have you talked about yourself in your lifetime? 21 days, over, I'm sure. I know mine's mm-hmm. over 21. Amen. So be careful of your I am's, Judy. Praise the Lord. I'm glad God spoke to you tonight. Don't do that anymore because He gets has, the enemy gets happy when he has you like that. Okay. Any questions? Okay. I miss Lexi. Um, seven, eight, and nine. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. 
No, they replied. There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourself. Okay. If the ones without, without oil try to cheat, then the ones with oil wasn't having it. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. Wow. Hmm. Anything else? Um, uh, Give us up your oil for our lamps are going out. First of all, who who are they to to tell them to give give them their oil? So well, the ones who weren't prepared, that's so Exactly. I would give mm-hmm. them the right to think that they're going to clip our wings. You know, our wings are only made for our bodies. We can't carry two people with them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you have oil in your lamp, you have just enough for you. You want that oil for... And I I, I got something out of verse 9, guys. I don't know if you've if you noticed it, but I got this out of verse 9. It's okay to say no. Oh, Jesus. Oh, well, that's for somebody else. I felt that whoever it is for, you guys are listening, Jesus, God is telling you it is okay to say no. Saying yes all the time doesn't make you a saint. Okay, I don't know if any of you out here have this problem of saying no sometimes. There are times where Mm -hmm. it says, but the wise answered, verse 9, but the wise answered saying, not so. Because if we give you us, you know, if, you, if you, we give you our oil, we're not going to have any. And he said, but you go out to the people who sell and buy some for yourself. Um, I remember um, there was a, a lady in my life. I don't know if I've told you this story before, um, but there was a lady in my life. Um, God bless her. I love her. She's still living, but I haven't hung with her in years. Uh, we went different ways uh, for spiritual reasons. <laughs> But um, she was a sweet lady, but she had a problem of begging and asking and asking and asking and asking. And what happened, uh, Lex, you know who I'm talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But what happened was I got to the point where I couldn't give anymore. You know, I I just couldn't give to this person anymore. And um, I, I talked to my pastor at the time, Pastor Ed, and I asked him, I said, um, I don't know what to do anymore. I love this person, but I can't continue to supply for them. You know, it's getting to the point. I was, I was feeling guilty because, you know, did you ever feel guilty because you're not doing something for someone or giving something to someone and you feel like it's your fault? Mm-hmm. See, and this is what I was doing. And he told me, he said, if you don't stop, he said, you're getting in God's way. Well, I'm paraphrasing. And I said, really? He said, if you don't stop, she's going to make you her God. You're stopping her from depending on God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, man. That's a word. So be careful because if you step in God's place, your arms are too short to box with God and your feet aren't big enough to fit his shoes, Okay. So, you know, uh, don't continue. Like these people here, they, it says the wise, the five wise virgins told them, no, you're not getting our oil. So there's times where you can say, no, you're not getting my last loaf of bread. I have to eat too. Mm-hmm. You know, no, you're not getting my milk. No, I can't give you my last $10. I have a car that needs gas too. Have you ever run out of gas before? Mm-hmm. I'm sure everybody knows what it's like. Uh, what do you say? Why do you run out of gas? The fuel warning is coming on, and you're still driving because you think you have time to get the gas, right? Mm-hmm. This is what these foolish virgins were doing. They thought they had time. You cannot do that to God. You can't play games with God. You can't tell God when he's coming and when he's not. They thought they had time. And I noticed when she was reading verse 9, uh, but the wise answer saying, not so, lest there be not enough for you, us and you, but go and buy some for yourself. There are people, they came up, I call them interlopers. 
Now, the wise uh, virgins are on the watch for Jesus, waiting for the bridegroom to come back. There are going to be interlopers to divert your attention away from the second coming. This is another message for tonight. Oh, my God's given us all kind of messages tonight. Praise the Lord. That's what I like. Not me, but my will, but thy will be done. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to divert companies, whatever, TV, radio, whatever. There's going to be a lot of things that's going to try to divert your attention away from the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yes. So be careful of the um, appointments that you make. Okay? Be care- be. What's the words we said last week in Bible study and remember? Um, Pride. Pride. No, remember the one that we were saying about being discreet. discreet. Remember, discretion was one and prudence was the other. Okay, learn. Here it comes up again again. See, it's, this is for somebody, I think. But discretion and prudence. Okay, don't ever think that you have enough time because God, if this is 2011, well, Jesus didn't come yet. I mean, there's people that are really talking like that right now. Well, it's 2011. The Christians keep crying and saying he's coming, he's coming, he didn't come yet, so we have time. I'm going to party. Yeah, you keep partying. Um, <laughs> Amen. Don't take advantage. Amen. Praise God. All right. Now, Pastor Rod, do you want to do 10, 11, and 12? 10, 11, 12. By the way, when Jesus gave these parables, he talked about, mm-hmm. uh, he talked about everyday occurrences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Like every, everyday occurrences. So this is something all the hearers could understand. Verse 10, 11, 12. And when they came to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in, went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. As for the other maidens came, came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Mm. Watch therefore. No, 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 that's it. Just 10, 11, and 12. Okay. Well, no oh, one yeah, was here. You can do 13. You can do 13. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. about that. Uh, watch therefore. You know neither the day nor the hour. No one, no one wants to hear, the, hear these words, Lord, Lord, uh, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. No one, no one wants to hear that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I know I don't. Mm-mm. Unfortunately, sin gets in the way. Neglect. The sin. Sin, the, the sin of neglect was one of them, right? They neglected. Yep. How could how could you have lamps and not have any oil in them? What was the purpose of having the lamp if it, if, if the anointing? I, well, you know what I'm saying. That's like having a lamp in my house, a, a plug-in lamp with no light bulb in it. <laughs> when the sun goes down, how am I going to be able to see? Oh, that's good too. When the sun goes down, Lord, when the sun is coming and going, how how am I going to be able to see? Wow. Hey, hey, Pastor Rod, and notice the one in verse um, verse 12 where he said, I, I know you, I don't know you. Once you, you know neither the day nor the hour. Well, the trouble is, all the visitors of the both the wise and foolish uh, virgins, both knew that the Bible would come, would come. He just delayed. And five of them were forced because they weren't prepared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And uh, when the when the bride when the bridegroom comes, and Jesus day, these were really boisterous affairs. He didn't come. He didn't come like a thief in the night, but they were well known boisterous affairs. So they weren't ready. And the wicked are, were rejected. Yep. Yeah. I do not know I do not know you. And if he says I don't know you, that means you're you're wicked. They were wicked people. They were lazy. Isn't there a proverb? Is a proverb? Yeah, there's a proverb that says the 
the hand uh, that uh, does not build the house, a lazy man does not lay his hand to build his house or something. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Jesus it, you, Jesus wants no lazy people. He calls, he calls them wicked. How can you have a lamp and not have oil in it and be prepared? He wants prepared people. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and a violent take it by force. Jesus wants you to always be prepared. Amen. Always. Be instant in season and out of season. I can't quote the scripture, that is. But I know it's be instant in season and out of season. Always be ready for anything spiritual, for your new spiritual life, to plant a seed to someone, to answer a question for somebody. You know, I've gotten to the point now, I don't know if I'm getting older now or what, <laughs> But I've gotten to the point now where I could wake up. My kids will tell you, I could wake up on a drop of a dime. I, I And I used to be a kind of a heavy sleeper, but I've gotten to the point now where I, I don't want to miss Jesus. I could wake up so easy. If my dog yawns, I'll wake up. And, and, and when I get up in the morning, I'm fully rested. I could wake up six, seventeen times, 16, 17 times a night and wake up in the morning and still be fully rested because God is just that good. So it doesn't make any difference how the devil tries to stop me from sleeping. I still get my sleep. Jesus. Amen. Anybody mm-hmm. here having problems sleeping? Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, praise God because uh, it, it's going to go away soon. The Lord is going to save us from all this mess, guys. He's going to save us just as long. If you have a hard time sleeping, the best thing to do is pray. Talk to the Lord, mm-hmm. pray pray about somebody, pray, pray for somebody. Just pray because the devil don't like it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Anybody have any questions or anything? Who else came on a line? Anybody else want to say your name? Somebody else came online? You don't have to if you don't want to. If you don't, then that means you're not going to. But we thank you for being here. Amen. All right. Anybody have anything they want to add to this? Why is everybody so quiet tonight? <laughs> everybody is so quiet tonight. I um I would like to tell you before we close our Bible study that was good about the virgins, always have your oil ready. Have your lamps ready. Have your oil ready. The oil is the anointing. What does Christ mean? Jesus Christ. What does the two words Jesus Christ mean? It means the anointed one. How can you have, how can you call yourself being a part of the anointed one if you don't have the anointing? Right? But I I want to tell everybody, um, our new website, I want to announce the new website, um, HTTP www.newbirthministrieshq.org, and it is going very, very nicely. Yeah. We, we have, let, me, let me write this down. Let's, okay. Let's see the uh huh. Uh-huh. It's called New. It's a uh, New it, Birth it's New. New Birth Ministries with the HQ at the end okay. for headquarters dot org. Okay. And it's it's God is good. It's going great. There's forums that you can type in. Um, you can uh, bring up your own subjects. Uh, there is a page for pastors and ministers um, where we those who are pastors and ministers can type their sermonettes or whatever on it or whatever prophecies that God might give them or whatever, you know, is of a spiritual nature there for people to learn from and to glean from. And uh, it's just a wonderful site. We have a page called Soul Food where you can listen to audio uh, sermons. It's nice. Um, Then we have a page called Cafe Press where you can order gifts and apparel, you can, cup, you can wear cups and T-shirts and hats. And I got my bumper sticker here, and I just want to tell you as I'm holding it, I'm looking at it, and it says, I Heart New Birth Ministries. It's black 
and it has white print on it with a red heart, and it's very, very cute. And the prices are really, really nice. The prices are cheap, under five dollars for the sticker, actually, guys. Um, and, and there's all kind of things there. It's, it's, it's just a nice, beautiful place. We have a few pastors that joined, and they're starting to type and enjoy their sermons and everything, enjoy the site. So if you guys can get on it, please come to New Birth Ministries HQ. Dot org. It is now our new home, and as far as the old New Birth Ministries, we're going to close it down Friday. I'm not sure if it's going to be in in the uh, night or in the morning, but we're closing it down. And every we so far we have everybody on there except for I think two people, and the, I, we sent out as many letters as we could. <laughs> so I just wanted to um, send, you know bring up by you. Is there anything else I'm leaving out? Anybody else want to announce anything before we get done? I have a song, Rev. Essie. Okay, okay. It goes with our Bible study tonight. It's called Wake Awake, Night is Flying. Wake awake, for night is flying. The watchmen on the heights are crying. Awake, Jerusalem, arise. Midnight hears the welcome voices, and at the thrilling cry rejoices. Oh, where are ye, virgins wise? The bridegroom comes awake. Your lamps with gladness take. Alleluia. With bridal care, yourselves prepare to meet the bridegroom who is near. That's one of my favorite hymns. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's this. That's, uh, oh. I come from, if you're familiar with the liturgical church, um, this uh, parable was the first Sunday mm-hmm. in Advent. Mm-hmm. Oh, praise Advent. God. Advent, of course, um, prepares Christians for not only the birth of Jesus, but also the second coming. Mm-hmm. So Isn't the that hymn beautiful? Was, the hymn was based on that, that parable. Yep. Wow. Does anybody else have anything? Because we have enough time. I'm not trying to take it all the way towards the hour. It doesn't always have to be 59 minutes. But does anybody else have anything they might want to say? Or? Okay. I just want to sing one um, one verse of I Surrender All. And then after I do that, I'll go ahead and Pray us out, and I thank everybody for coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. Daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, our precious Savior. I surrender all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you so much for the messages that you gave us tonight, Lord God. We thank you for being able to have this Bible study. There are some countries, Lord, where people are getting beheaded just for mentioning your name. And we can still, still at the moment have Bible studies and mention your name and talk about the Lord. And as long as we can, we're going to proclaim it because we are not ashamed of the gospel, Lord God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for entering this Bible study. I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to touch every person that is on right now. I see the phone lines are lit up, Lord. Touch every household that's represented by those phone lines, Lord God. And for whatever request they have, you I don't know what they are. You know what they are, Lord God. And I ask that you give each and every one of us the patience that we need until you come around and take care of all of our business for us, all of our needs, all of our wants, the prayers that we give you, all the requests, Lord God, and even the requests of people for, who ask for prayer, Alinda, from our 
from uh, New Birth Ministries, the old group, Lord, there, she has a special request. And, and uh, Lord, I ask that you touch her and her family in the name of Jesus, the mighty, matchless name of Jesus. Lord, you've been giving me some healings. I've been seeing healings in my life in various ways, mainly with my body. And I want to say that publicly, that you are awesome Jehovah Rapha healing God. And I ask that you send Jehovah Rapha healing God to everybody that's on here right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, for all our neighbors, for our communities, for our nations, our cities, states, Lord God, bless America, Lord God, and we also ask that you bless other nations of this world to understand that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And number two, that we must have an awesome relationship with Jerusalem, with Israel. And I thank you, Lord God. We love you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'll see you back next Wednesday. God bless you. and. Good night. Okay. Good night. Take care.